Praise the Lord, everybody. Good evening. We are glad you're with us this evening for our evening service here at North Greensboro Church of God. As we go to the Lord in prayer this evening, we have been asked to pray for Buddy Durham, who's in the hospital. So let's pray for this need this evening, that God will just move this situation. Pray for everyone that's been affected by this virus. And let's pray for one another. Amen. Right. Yeah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. Yes, Lord. We just glorify your name, Father. We thank you, God, for this opportunity we have to come together and worship you. And we ask, God, that you would anoint our time together this evening, that you would touch and move in the name of Jesus, Father. We let lift Mr. Durham to you, God. We pray you would touch him, God. We pray you bring healing to him. Touch yes, those all, God, that are dealing with this virus, yes, Father. God, touch these, God, Heal the sick, God, Lord, and do a work, God, Lord, especially those that are in the hospital, Lord. We Jesus, pray that you would touch them in the name of Jesus, Lord. We ask for your anointing to be upon this service tonight, God. And Lord, help us, God, and give us strength. And for that, God, we'll give you praise and glory, Lord. For it's in the name of Jesus we do pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Sister Janie comes to lead us in a song. Or two. Or two or three even. <laughs> All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. I trust everybody's had a good day today. Uh, it has been a good day for us. And uh, we would ask that you pray for Noah. I'm not sure which ear, uh, but we took him to the doctor in between services today. And... Um, He's got what could be a uh, ear infection, uh, so we're going to be starting him on antibiotic either tonight or in the morning. So um, I do remember him in prayer. Uh, other than that, though, he's awake and doing good this evening. If y'all could see him, he would be hollering at you. <laughs> but anyway, help me sing tonight. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart.
Tonight we're going to sing Silent Night. Bibles this evening. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 7. Matthew 5 verse 7. The word of the Lord says the following. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. mercy. Yes. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. I want to preach this evening on blessed are the merciful. Blessed are are the merciful. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We just thank you and praise you for this day. We ask for the anointing of your spirit to be upon us. Praying, God, you would touch us this evening. Give us strength, Lord. Speak to our hearts. And for that, we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is fascinating how the virtues in the Beatitudes are balanced with the promise that attends to them. There tends to be a relationship between the virtual and the reward that is to be given to those who demonstrate that virtue. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness are promised that they will be satisfied. Those who mourn are promised comfort. Those who are meek, that is those who are willing to accept the providence that they have in this world, will inherit the earth. 
But we get to verse 7 and we see this. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. This is both comforting and frightening. It is not an unusual teaching from Jesus. He has taught this sort of thing frequently. Even in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, 12, we learn, forgive us of our debts as we've forgiven our debtors. And later in the Sermon on the Mount, we're told by the same measure by which we are merciful to others is the measure we can expect God to be merciful to us, according to Matthew 7, 2. This is frightening because we tend not to be as merciful towards others as God is toward us. So let us look at this beatitude this evening and learn how it applies to our life. First of all, we need to ask ourselves, what is mercy? Dr. George Morris, in his book, Life of Christ, defines merciful as being full of mercy. It means being compassionate, forbearance, relief from distress, compassion to shown victims, uh, to, shown to victims of distress, or misfortune, goodwill, shown an understanding to the tolerance of others, forgiving and overlooking faults. The word merciful, here in the Greek, according to Vine's Dictionary of Old and New Testament words, means the outward manifestation of pity. It assumes need on part of him who receives it, and resources adequate to meet the need on the part of him who shows it. It is used of God who was rich in mercy, and who has provided salvation for all men. He is merciful for those who fear him, for they are compassed with infirmity, and he alone can secure them. Hence they are to pray boldly for mercy, and for and if for themselves, it is seemingly that they should ask for mercy one for another. When God brings his salvation to its issue at the coming of Christ, his people will obtain mercy. Hallelujah. Of men, for since is merciful to them, he would have them show mercy to one another. The word mercy, according to Strong's Greek Dictionary, means to means compassionate or to have compassion. Given these meanings, we can put together what mercy truly is. Merciful is given compassion while mercy is receiving compassion. Mercy is an act of, con kind, act of kindness independent of written law. Mercy does not ask who is suffering, but what can I do to relieve the suffering? It is a quality of one who is whole-natured. When justice calls, mercy answers. Amen. 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 Yes. Habakkuk said this in Habakkuk 3, 1 and 2, a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet Upon Shinnagoth, O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. And in the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. Right. Justice called, mercy answers. We see this in Adam. Adam, of course, we understand Adam and Eve in the story in the garden where the enemy come in as a serpent and tempted them and they partook and they sinned against God. Justice called, but mercy answered in the form of the second Adam. Hallelujah. Justice called. They were to be condemned for sin forever, but mercy answered when God told them that he was going to put enmity between the woman and her and her and, and between the enemy, the serpent, and the woman's seed. We see it in Jonah. Justice called. God called Jonah to go to Nineveh and Jonah ran from God but mercy answered in the form of a well in three days and three nights we see it with David justice called when David fell from grace and he went and, and had the affair with Bathsheba but mercy answered in Psalm 51 when David cried create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me we see it in Paul, justice called when Paul became the chief persecutor of the Christians in Acts chapter 8. But mercy answers in Acts 9 when Paul gives his life over to the Lord. We see it with Peter, justice calls 
with Peter tonight, Jesus, three times. But mercy answered in John 21 when Jesus restored Peter three times. I want you to understand this evening. Justice may call, but mercy answers. Hallelujah. And I'm grateful for the mercy of God. In fact, Jeremiah said in Lamentations, it is by the mercies of God we are not consumed, but they are renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. Hallelujah. Mercy is the answer this evening. How is mercy expressed? It's expressed through our Lord Jesus Christ. We see it in His teachings. We see in Luke chapter 10 and the parable of the Good Samaritan. We understand that mercy cost something. The religious leaders did not want to give mercy to the Samaritan. The, the, the rulers did not want to give mercy to the Samaritan. But I'm here to tell you, I want you to understand the good Samaritan gave mercy. He picked up this man. He cleaned, He picked him up, took him and provided room and board for him. And provided oil for his wounds and balm for his wounds. And I want you to understand something this evening. Justice calls, but mercy answers. Hallelujah. But this mercy will cost you something, friend. Mercy will cost you something. And we've got to under, we're living in a day to where we don't want to sacrifice anything for God anymore. True. We don't. We don't want to sacrifice anything for God anymore. We want everything. We want everything from God, but don't want to do anything for God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand mercy costs something. In the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, we learn to forgive our debtors. This means mercy looks beyond the fault of others. You know, all of us are human. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to have some faults. We're going to have some problems. And yes, if we fall into temptation snares, we may even sin. But we have an advocate with the Father, the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we can cry out in repentance and be forgiven of sin. But mercy looks beyond the fall of others. None of us are perfect. I've met some people in my life who think they're perfect. But none of us are perfect. Then there's the parable of the unforgiving servant in Matthew 18, 23 through 25. This teaches us mercy needs to be shared. You know, if the Lord has forgiven us of our sins, if the Lord has cleansed us of sin, if the Lord has set us free, if the Lord has anointed us with the gifts of the Spirit, how dare we not share it with others? And not tell someone about the Lord. And not demonstrate through, through ministry to others. We see it in His miracles. Jesus, te Luke testified of it in writing Acts in Acts 10.38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. And healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with Him. His power over nature demonstrated mercy. When they were in the boat and the storm started blowing and he rose up and calmed the storm he sees, we seen mercy. His power over demons in Matthew 5 with the demon of Gargania. He was delivered and set free. Mercy was demonstrated. His power over sickness, the healing of the woman with the issue of blood, the healing of Jairus' daughter. The healing of many others throughout the word of God in the gospels. Mercy was demonstrated. His power over death when Lazarus died. And he wept. And then he said, loose them and let them go. His mercy was demonstrated. We see it in his power over the law. In Matthew 5, 17, he says, Think not that I've come to destroy the law of the prophets, I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Justice says an eye for an eye. Mercy says go to the second mile. Justice says stone the adulteress. 
Mercy says, go and sin no more. Justice says, leper out of the city. Mercy says, be clean. The priest could only go to the Holy of Holies once a year. That was law. But mercy says, come boldly before the throne of grace. That we might obtain help in the time of need. I've come to tell someone this evening. We have the mercy of God. And we need to demonstrate that mercy each and every day. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, help us, God. Amen. Yes. But what are the results of mercy this evening? Number one, we have received the grace of God through mercy. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, For by grace you are saved through faith, it is not yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath ordained that we should walk in them. Every epistle writer opens some of their epistles with the phrase grace, mercy, and peace. Or, or mercy, grace be with you, mercy and peace. We see it in 1 Timothy 1, 2, 2 Timothy 1, 2, Titus 1, 4, and in 2 John 1, verse 3. That shows that Paul, when he wrote to Timothy and Titus, and John, when he wrote his epistle in 2 John, he talked about having mercy. We are told that, mer that, we, that the mercy received is to be used in prayer. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain what? Mercy. And find grace to help in the time of need. Right, right. The second result is we must be merciful. Uh -huh. Matthew 10 verse 8 says Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely as you have received, freely give. So we must give God's mercy. It's applying what we have received. It's making disciples as we become disciples. Acts 1.8 says, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Right. Having showing mercy is applied the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. It is applying the forgiveness of God. Jesus once said in Matthew 7, 2, For with what judgment ye judge, ye will be judged. And with what measure ye might, it will be measured back to you. So if you forgive others, it's a demonstration of God forgiving you. But if you're unforgiving, you will find that the Lord is the same way. James 2.13 says, For judgment is without mercy to the one that has shown no mercy. As a man judges, so he will be judged. If mercy is the characteristic of God, that someone who practices it will become more and more like Jesus every day. But he who makes attempt to show mercy, no mercy distances himself from God and demonstrates that he does not know him. Peter was caught one time asking Jesus, how many times should we forgive someone? Thinking himself generous, Peter suggested the number 70. But the Lord laughed it off and and, and suggested it was more like 70 times 7. Then Jesus told the story of the man who owed the king a great sum of money, but was unable to pay it back. He was mercifully forgiven the debt, but that same man then went out and had another man arrested for not paying him back $10 in our currency today. The king was furious, and when he found out about it, and had ungrateful rich, had the ungrateful wretch arrested until he could pay back every penny. And the Lord finished this story by saying in Matthew 18, 35, So also my heavenly Father also will do to you, each of you from his heart, does not forgive his brother his trespasses. What made it mandatory that this debt be forgiven? The fact that his own huge debt had been canceled. 
We have been forgiven a great debt by our Heavenly Father if we have Jesus as our Savior. Yes. One we could never repay. Our sin debt was so great that no amount of good works or sacrifice could ever take care of it. Mm -hmm. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, right. according, to Matthew, uh, according to Romans 6.23. But when Christ died on the cross, He forgave us freely of everything we have ever done. He has shown us great mercy. So what, we, we, so what should we do when we are confronted by someone who needs our mercy? We need to extend mercy to them. Mm -hmm. It is our responsibility by the grace of God to show mercy to those around us. It does not always happen in the church because we want people to live up to our expectations and earn our love. But that is not the system Christ put into place. He wants us to love others even when they don't deserve it. Right. Yes. Lord, help us to do that. We are all flawed human beings in need of mercy. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful for the mercy this evening. That mercy of God just doesn't go with my salvation. But it goes with me being sanctified and set apart for God. It goes with me having to call a ministry on my life. It's His mercy. It goes with me, hallelujah, being filled with His Spirit. It goes with me, glory to God, in my needs being met. In my body being healed. And in my life, being touched. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the mercy of God this evening. Yes. It's by God's mercies that we have not been consumed. Because they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. In closing this evening, in Morton Thompson's novel, Not as a Stranger, a young doctor accuses an older physician of malpractice. Brilliant and capable, but impatient and tolerant, the young doctor sits before a review committee to discuss the charges. The men on the committee are older and ask the young man not to act hastily, but to consider the actions of the older doctor as a difference of opinion. Any man in the zealousness of youth tends to judge others more harshly, but that young doctor will not retract his accusation. So the president of the medical association leans across his desk, looks at the young man in the eyes and says, if you persist in bringing formal charges, then be sure of one thing. Don't ever, ever, as long as you live, make a mistake. The way we treat others is the way we will be treated. And the good news is that if you show mercy to others, even when they don't deserve it, this, the, the result will be joy in the Lord. Ask God to give you sensitivity to those around you this week. Look for people with needs and reach out in mercy and meet them. The world says not to look for, the world says to look out for yourself, but the Lord says to look out for others. The world wants you to believe that you will be happy when you take care of yourself, but nobody is happy in a selfish world. They are alone. Happiness is found in ministering to others. The merciful will obtain mercy and will find true happiness in being merciful to others. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let me tell you this evening, if you have received God's mercy, find someone you can be merciful to this week and let God use you in a mighty way. Let's pray together. Father, we love you and we just glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy this evening. And Lord, I have shared with that which you have given me. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that God, you would help us, Lord, to be merciful to someone this week, Lord. It may be someone that has put us down. It may be someone that has hurt our feelings. It may be someone, Lord, that has caused us nothing but grief. But help us, Lord, to show your love regardless. And let us be people of prayer, God. And God, use us for your glory in the name of Jesus.
God, if there's someone that we come in contact with this week that's hurting, and we see someone hurting, help us be, have a word of encouragement, yes. a word of mercy. Yes, Lord. If we see someone, Lord, this week that that is, feels like their world is caving in, help us to have a kind word for them that would build them up. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would touch each and every one of us this week and give us strength. And for that, God, we will give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Don't forget, Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we will be right back here. We will be looking at Revelation chapter 9 this Wednesday night. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he guide you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, and give you the glory, Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you this evening.